Hello YouTube, welcome to the garage. Back working on the 2007 Toyota, trying to get it put back together. Inspecting some parts here, and I'm uh, going to clean up the um, brackets for the brake calipers and the sliders and stuff like that. So I'm um, gonna, you know, I want to get everything cleaned up and ready to go and put it back together. And I just was doing some inspecting, so we're going to start off do a little bit of vapor blasting and um, see what we can do to clean these parts up. So let me get my earplugs in. We're going to be blasting it at 60 PSI. Got a mixture of uh, glass bead and aluminum oxide. And we're going to see what this uh, process can do. We think does a nice job well we're gonna go ahead and finish cleaning these up and I got the uh, bolts and the sliders and stuff for the calipers in there to do Clean down in the hole where the slider goes.
What do you think? Doesn't look too bad, does it? That'll work. There's one thing I wanted to try here. I'm going to clean all these parts up. But these are the sliders. The, the you know, the, um, go through the caliper, so let it move. And there's something I noticed. I don't know if you can see it. You see they're kind of galded and slippery. See this discoloration here? And also, I'm not the one that took this apart. There's supposed to be a little rubber bushing here. That part's missing. It does have the little bellows to keep the water out, but uh, that's the part that's missing. But I noticed that these have this kind of galling on it. I want to see what this process does, see if I can clean that up. I like them nice and smooth and shiny. We'll see what happens. What do you think? I don't know if you can see that galling there. Perfectly smooth. Sandblasting would be removing um, some material, and that'd be kind of rough. This is polishing it, and it's not removing, it's not changing the tolerances. That's why I like the vapor blasting. Could you have uh, polished that up on a wire brush? Yeah, sure. But it won't polish the surface like this does. It cleans it smooth. The glass beads. Aluminum oxide removes the uh, any kind of oxidation, rust, contamination. Perfectly smooth, brand new. Before. can for crickets. Get these sliders cleaned up here.
sorry about that. Yep. I'm going to put these bolts in there, put all that in there together, and blast it in that container. So I'm going to go chase a couple of bolts. Let me do that real quick. Get them thrown in there. Hey, sorry about that. I messed you up. I just wonder if this would work for uh, cleaning bulk bolts. That's not what I wanted to do. I think I dropped one, but oh well. Just want to see how this works.
the job. Instead of doing them individually, I could just sew everything in there. couple things I want to talk about that I figured out while I was uh, inspecting these parts. So I'm going to finish blasting this, then I'll, I'll pick up with the on the bench. Okay, got everything all vapor blasted and dried off. And uh, what I wanted to kind of point out here, when I picked up this car, uh, you know, there was the parts were kind of laying all over, but I'm sure they were in an you know, organized fashion because the gentleman that was working on this, is off the scale brilliant. This guy is a mechanical engineer, so I promise you everything you know, was in a place for a reason, and he knew exactly where everything was, but then I come in, and uh, <laughs> I really didn't pay attention to what came off what side. I just threw everything in a box and put it in the truck. So that was my bad. So I'm just you know, inspecting everything here and seeing what I got. And these um, brackets, everything, you know, they had all the, you know, all the, you know, uh, little bellows here and everything, it was all assembled. You know, the screws, the bolts were here, the bolts were in here. It was all assembled, nice and organized. Of course, there was one on each side, but I didn't pay attention to which one was on which side. All right, so now here I am, you know, which side goes where. Uh, they do look identical. You know, we've got the, you know, the same number here. There's a number here. These numbers are different, but they numbered there. This same mark here. This has got a four. This has got a two. I, you know, only difference I really noticed is this has three little divots here, and this has one. As far as appearance, but there is another bit, big difference. Okay, these are the sliders. One is longer than the other. Let me make sure to get this in front of you. Okay, and so obviously, you know, okay, this one bottoms out in here. You know, this one will fit in each either one. But, you know, if I put this in the wrong one, this is what we get, and that's not good. So, this one goes in this side, this one goes in this side. All right, and since these, you know, I said they look the same except for these little three divots but you see you got the long one here okay so if they're the same you know you put the long one there that doesn't bottom out it does there and this fits in this side it bottoms out so we'll get these set up like this okay you got the long ones here and the short ones here Okay, but which is left and which is right is the question. I didn't see any markings on here that I could interpret as left and right. Um, so, what do you do? Does it really matter? Can you put one on, you know, the, on the wrong side and still have it work? Probably. Um, because I'm not, I can't figure out exactly what the difference would be. But, you know, I think it would operate the same. But, um, I like to put things together right. So what do you do? All right, well, uh, I use all data, you know, because they don't make uh, repair manuals anymore, and the ones they have are crap, but um, I use all data, but there's Mitchell One, there's a lot of online stuff. So what I did, because you know, I want to make sure I put this together right. I mean, if it was my car, eh, maybe I might swag it. But uh, you know, when I'm working on a customer's car, it's, it's gotta be right, or I'm not gonna let it go. Um, so I did some digging, I got on all data, and I got a little printout here of the components of the brake system. Okay, hopefully you can see that. All right, so we got our pins right here. All right, so this pin, you know, this is just a plain pin. And this pin has got 
this little groove in it. Okay, it shows it right there. You know, the groove, and it's got that little, the little wind's blowing here a little bit, but uh, the slide bushing goes in this groove. But as you can see, that goes in the bottom. Do I have that in the right one? Yeah, I do. But uh, this goes in the bottom. All right, so this means this is the top. Okay, so which side is that? Is this the left or right? All right, well, if we set it up like this, okay, let me set my little thing down here. If we set it up like this, you know, this part will, this will bolt to the steering knuckle and your rotor will run here. Well, the only way that will work is if it's on the left side of the vehicle. Okay? So let me lay this one down, put this one together. So this goes here. Okay, got the long one goes at the top, and then the uh, short one goes at the bottom according to this. Hey, do I have that No. Oh, I have it turned around. I probably have it flipped over. Yeah, because the. Ah. There we go. There we go. Long one at the top. Long one at the top. Short one at the bottom. So, when they obviously the actual well, bracket itself, they're all the same, but the way they're machined are different. And I'm not sure exactly what those little three divots mean, um, if I can find them. That's on the top. The three divots are on the top. Okay, um, maybe that's the way you tell, uh, you know, the, the, which one, if you, if you knew which is the top, because you see, you can't tell by this, because the, the, this number, on the, this one's on the top and this is on the bottom. But, these little dimples right here are on the top. So, if that's the indicator of which one's the top, this would be the right one, and this would be the left one. So now we know, when we put this back together, this will be the right one, and this is the left one. And there's one other thing I noticed when I was uh, working on this. Okay, like I said, this was all put together nice and neat. All the, the bellows were in there and everything. So I took it apart to clean it. And uh, I said, this is you know the bottom one. And it, it clearly shows that there's a little um, slide bushing right here. You got the dust boot, that's here, but this little slide bushing on both of them is missing. All right, um, so I, I've been trying to figure out, could you go get away with putting that, without putting that on there? I'm sure. Um, it would probably rattle a little bit, but uh, still, you know, I, I don't think it would really make any difference in the performance. Um, you know, it wouldn't make the car less safe. But uh, as far as, you know, it might, you know, make a little bit of noise and rattle. But again, when it comes to the, you know, some critical components like brakes, I, t I you know, the parts are there for a reason, in my humble opinion. Um, and so, you know, I think that needs to be there. Just, again, you know, can I tell you, you know, if, you know, why it would, you know, what would happen if you didn't put it in there? Would it fail? Probably not, but it was designed this way, so I like to put it back together right. So I'm trying to find some of these. Dorman's got a part number for it, um, but uh, you know, nobody in town's got it. I could order it from Rock Auto. I, you know, they do have it, but um, I, you know, I just got to, you know, it takes time to get parts in here. I'm trying to get this thing done for this young gentleman that's going to be driving us at school. Uh, but um, be it as it may, I just kind of wanted to bring you along, you know, just show you what I'm doing here and, you know, my thought processes as I'm doing it. You know, this is, you know, just, I mean, pretty simple breaks, but uh, I just kind of, you know, this, this adventure of putting this thing back together and getting everything figured out and I'm just bringing you along and, you know, trying to show you my thought processes, as terrifying as that might be. So, 
Uh, we figured out that this is the right one, this is the left one, and uh, everything's all cleaned up and nice, you know, everything will work well. Uh, the only thing I gotta do is try and find that little rubber bushing that goes there. And, and again, I, you know, I don't have a battery for this car. The battery that was spanked that came with, you know, with it. So I haven't had been able to see what uh, light up the dash. It's got an all glass dash in it and uh, I can't see the mileage on it. Um, supposedly it's low mileage, um, but I just, I, it makes me wonder if it does have, you know, somewhere in the 60,000 miles, who took this apart and took that off? Because it was not in here when I took it apart. And I doubt seriously the gentleman, you know, who took this apart, pulled that off and threw it away. I, I just, I, you know, he wouldn't do that. I, you know, just met him, but, you know, a little bit I talked to him, he wouldn't just take that part off and throw it away. When he took it apart, I'm sure this wasn't here. So in that short of miles, who took it apart and why did they throw that away? So that's just kind of things that I think about when I'm working on a car. I don't know the history of the car. And, you know, so if I'm finding stuff like this, I'm really going to pay attention, in, you know, when I go over this car. Because if somebody, you know, would take this apart and leave that out, number one, why did they take it apart with such low mileage and why would they leave that out? Um, I don't know. But stuff like that, I think about. And when I'm working on something, you know, if I find something that's kind of cobbled together, well, what else did they cobble together? You know, and you know, when I let this car go, I have to know it's safe. And, you know, so I really like to pay attention and look close because like I said, if, you know, even if it was a component or something that I didn't work on, you know, but I had it in here knowing, you know, what the use of, you know, any car, if I had it in here, you know, I do my best to try and make sure that when it leaves here, it's safe. Um, and, you know, if, you know, even if it's something somebody else did, you know, I'm not talking about the gentleman that you know took this apart uh i promise you he didn't do anything hinky uh, on this car i'm worried about whoever owned it before him um so uh but so yeah, but, you know that's kind of my thought process is when i'm working on stuff i try and pay attention rather than just zip zop slap it together um you know i want to you know really check the car over especially if i find something like this it's it just begs the question why do they have to take it apart with such low mileage and why are you leaving parts out? Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. So um, I don't want to get this video too long. And, uh, in, in, uh, today's a Memorial Day in uh, 2024, uh, you know, the date of this uh, recording. And I did order a battery for this, but the um, Batteries Plus is closed today. So I can't get a battery for it until tomorrow. And then I can, you know, you know, light this thing up and see what, you know, um, how many miles are actually on this thing. And uh, once I get, you know, I'm also going to make videos of putting all this stuff together. And then once I um, get it all together, get it running and, and driving, I do want to put my scan tool on it. I've got a um, Think Tool uh, Platinum S10 Pro. And, I'm, you know, I, I know it won't have any freeze frame data. And, of course, all of the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, I just spaced it out. It, all of the like the emission stuff, you know, won't won't have run. All the monitors, the, that's it. I'm trying to say the monitors, you know, wouldn't have you know run. That will all be blank. But I can you know fire it up, look at live data, uh, you know, check fuel trims, and just see how it's running. Uh, so I am going to do that once I get it all together. I will scan it and see if there is anything in there uh, since it's been sitting for God only knows how long with a without a battery in it. So. Um, but I'm going to continue the videos, going through the process, putting this thing together, checking it over, uh, getting it running, you know, and trying to make sure it's running right and as safe as I possibly can. So um, I guess that's enough for now. So if you could, you know, deal, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.